Hi gang, so a short one this week, but I've got a present for you to make up for it. A few weeks ago, I made a video on how the whole three ways to play thing doesn't really work. Nobody plays open play, crusade play mostly only happens in an organized campaign, and so everyone just defaults to match play. But the amount of homework you have to do to play match play pushes some people like me away from playing 40k at all. I suggested that open play really should be more of a structured casual format for people who want a varied and interesting game but don't want to spend ages on their min-maxing homework. And some people made some nice comments and said that they agreed and that if that format existed they'd play. So I made it. It's called Filthy Casual Play because it's fun to play games on easy mode and because nobody cares how good you are at Warhammer. Filthy Casual Play is a fourth way to play for Warhammer 40,000. It's intended to speed up game setup and army construction, to reduce the reliance on invisible upgrades, combos and gotchas by removing them from the army building process, and to provide a common standard for non-competitive gaming. So yeah, that's the intention. Make playing this game less hard work for both players by moving all this stuff out of the list building world and turning it into more of a little narrative twist during the game. 1. Muster Army You and your opponent should muster armies from the miniatures in your collection. You can use points or power levels to construct your armies to any total. In filthy casual play, your army may consist of a maximum of two detachments, which may not use the same combination of faction keywords. In addition, your army may not contain two different versions of the same sub-faction keyword. The intent here should be pretty clear. Stop min-maxing of the faction rules. In the original video, I floated the idea of just using single detachments, but that would make some really fluffy armies impossible. No Inquisitors leading Astromilitarum armies, no Chaos Marines with demons, so two detachments it is. I've also included a few sample exceptions. For example, if you want to run an Ultramarines detachment with an Ultramarines Super Heavy, that's fine. Militarum Tempestus being special forces and a guard army, again, probably fine. I'm sure most of these will come up as we go along, but you get the idea. 2. Determine Mission Any mission can be used in filthy casual play. I think open play cards are probably the quickest and most fun way to get games going, but any mission can really be used. The only stipulation is that if you're using a competitive mission, just ignore the secondaries. Also, Maelstrom of War is great, but having a deck of tactical objective cards can really reduce the paperwork. Right, here's the big one. 3. Generate Traits After determining the mission, but before deployment, determine the following invisible traits. Psychic powers, either choose your psychic powers as normal or roll them randomly from the relevant tables. Warlord traits, if you choose to use warlord traits, roll them randomly from the relevant tables. You can always swap out a rolled result for the sub-faction specific warlord trait. Relics, it's recommended that relics are not used, but if you choose to use them, then pick one from the list. And with any faction specific version of this, just handle it in the same way. Look, there are three ways you can go with all this stuff. You can let people pick them, which is how you get all the combos and gotchas, or you can remove them entirely, or you can use the numbers printed next to all this stuff, in which case they become little twists that add variety to the game, but which players can't tailor to their advantage beforehand. And yeah, someone might roll lucky or unlucky, but that's the game. Finally, generate stratagems. In filthy casual play, each player gets a single stratagem for every 500 points or 20 power rating in their army. That's three or four in a standard size game. You can either pick them or you can draw them randomly. The stratagems picked should always be visible to both players and each can be used once per game. If you get one that lets you spend different amounts of command points, just use the minimum. So this is basically how Necromunda tactics cards work. I've kept in the option to pick since there are a couple of forces that heavily rely on certain stratagems, but it'll be interesting to see if that's actually much of a hindrance or if it just forces the army to be played differently. Yeah, if you decide to pick them, then you're probably going to choose the best ones for your army. But given that both of you are doing that and they're only one off effects, I don't think it'll affect the game too much. So that's it. I've included the link below. Feel free to download and share and even try some games if you want. Let me know how they go in the comments and maybe we'll revise it regularly, make a version two in a couple of months. Right, I'm off to do some writing. There's some much bigger videos than this coming up. Until then, thanks for watching.